<laughs> how are you doing today? How's it, how's life been? You know, um, all things considered, I've been pretty lucky. So it's, um, it's been a good day. How about you? you? you I'm pretty good. You think we're going to get out of quarantine soon? You know, if, if we all follow all these guidelines. <laughs> I know. I see everybody going party in like Houston I, and Atlanta. I don't understand it. I really <laughs> don't. I almost feel like we need to get, you know, like they need to spray something in the air so that we can see the visual visual representation of it. And then maybe. Oh, yeah. I, I, I see other countries like they like stayed in for like three or four months and now they're like back to normal. And I think like the theaters in China are open right now. Like, I'm yeah. like what's going on? Like, why can't we just do this for like three? Like, we can't all come to agreement for like three months and like just stay in the house and like get back out here. <laughs> I agree with you. I, you know, I, I don't understand it e either. When I, when I see all the parties like you speak of and all the things that are not necessary. Yeah. It, it blows my mind. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. Like you've been killing it on season three, like American Gods. Like you really like the like really you just like superstar them like in the show. Oh, you're so excited. But I want to talk to you about like I seen like a lot of your recent interviews. You were talking about like your story and telling everything. Like, do you remember like your first like favorite story you heard growing up? Oh, that's a good question. For some reason, I seem to remember. Um, uh, I, I, I mean, I, I remember. You know, there were a lot of um, the tales from from Africa, from Nigeria, and so I, I remember quite a few of those stories being told by my elders, like my father and. Um, you know, I have a lot of relatives. My grandfather had how many wives and on average they had how many children. So, you know, we always had family coming through. Um, and so the elders would come in. But for some reason, now that you're asking me, the recollection that's coming to me immediately is the gingerbread man. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's not like the first one but for some reason I have such a vivid memory of you know what it was it was because it was the call and response and a lot of stories that my elders used to tell were very much call and response it was you know it was a communal thing storytelling it's not just one person saying something and you know yeah. just on the other side of it that's why I don't mind in theaters when people are talking back to me you know when I'm on the stage I'm like yeah I get it <laughs> You know? it's like it's communal but I just remember that phrase you know run run as fast as you can um you can't catch me I'm the gingerbread man yeah <laughs> um yeah. is there like a story that you heard growing up that you like like to put into like life like into like a tv show or like a movie mm. um there I mean I would like to talk about things like I, I remember my, my father used to tell a story of, of the lady of the lake and it wasn't told as a fictional story it was you know it was it wasn't until I grew older and then started seeing European versions of you know lady of the lake and I'm like wait what who's that no that's from the village you know um <laughs> But yeah, he he used to tell the story, and apparently, you know, it was this whole idea that there there was this lake that they had, and there was there was this you know being within it, the the lady. Um, but then with um, with colonization and with um, even more so pollution and all of that, um, she, I mean, he tells the story of how she would got, she came and said, I'm, "I have to leave now." Um, and I've never really um, heard that anywhere else. And especially the way it was so, it was just so real and prevalent. Yeah. And even as a child, to me, it made sense. I went, yeah, you know, pollution. Why would she want to live in that lake anymore? Um, and that's something I, I would like to explore. Um, you know, who was she? What what was, you know, what was the relationship that she had with the village? Um, what other kinds of beings, you know, existed like that? Um, yeah, great question. I don't think I've ever told anyone that before. <laughs> no, I just, I always thought of that. Um, is storytelling like your like main reason why you started acting? 
Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, um, that's the, that's the engine. That's the um, generator. That's, that's what um, draws me. And part of it is because storytelling isn't just, um, again, you know, we've talked about how I said it's, it's more communal. Yeah. There's this experience, like a circuit that occurs between storyteller and people hearing the story. And in that way, everybody is part of the story. Um, and in that way that I felt there were a lot of things I learned growing up that were passed through stories. Um, as an, you know, on an anthropological level, I think storytelling is fascinating and goes above and beyond um, maybe the ways we tend to think about it now. Um, although now I'm gonna disagree with myself and say, I, I think we are seeing the absolute importance of stories and how they shape our culture and how they teach us about our past and help us move forward. That's, that's good. No, I really... So what's like, do you remember like your first like acting performance ever? <laughs> like, do you, what, like what was like your first ever? Like even if it was like a story that you were just acting out with friends or was it like in a theater or? <laughs> oh, I love that you bring up the idea of um, acting things out with, with friends because I always say, you know, if you meet, if you meet Nigerians, there are a lot of just very natural storytellers. Yeah. Someone can tell you about, you know, their walk from the house to the market and <laughs> you're just like, what? And what happened? You know, for years, I didn't realize that I hadn't actually watched Back to the Future 2. It was my cousins who had gone out of country and they had watched it and they came back and they told us about it. So when I finally watched it, you know, because they added their own sauce, you know, a little bit. <laughs> so watching it, I'm like, wait, that doesn't happen like that. Like, no, this, you know, um, it took me a long time to realize it because again, just such wonderful storytellers. So I, I, you know, I love the way you phrased the question because that makes me realize there was probably a lot of storytelling before, you know, getting up on a stage. Um, but I do remember the first time um, getting up to do <laughs> an audition um, and I was maybe six or something maybe oh, young young <laughs> yeah and I went to international school in Nigeria and usually they didn't let um, like they would have the whole school do a yearly Christmas play and it was a big deal because, you know, everybody became a part of it. And it was fascinating because it was a kind of improv together by the students, but based on like certain Disney ideas. Um, <laughs> so usually they wouldn't let anyone below second grade do anything but come on and just like sing certain courses and leave, you know, as a group. Um, or was it beyond first grade? Um, and they, for the first time, were taking two kids out of kindergarten to be part of, they were doing Peter Pan. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, yeah. I they love were, Peter Pan. Yeah, I love Peter Pan. Right? Peter Pan. <laughs> for all us kids, that was everything. And so for the first time, they were choosing two kids from kindergarten to be a part of it. And there was, we were, they were going to be twins. And so I remember I got it and my friend Christina um, from France <laughs> was my twin. <laughs> and that's the first time I remember getting on a stage and being like, oh, this is, this is the storytelling. This is the thing by the fire. This is what um, I want to do. And that oh, that's, was that's amazing. Um, I know like I, when I go to like theaters, like just like go watch a play and then go watch a movie. I just, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like people like as actors, I don't know, I'm not an actor. So like, do you feel like you like gain way more like experience and everything from like, from a play than you do like doing like a TV show or like a movie? Oh, see, I, I think it's, they're, they're kind of apples and oranges in that they, they each offer something different. Um, for example, going to see a play 
there's something really ephemeral about that. You know that that's the only time this version of this play will exist ever in time. Yeah. I mean, even if they record it on it, it's not- It's not the same. same. It's not the same. Yeah. And it's the energy around the whole audience that adds to that, what's happening on that stage in that moment. It's, it's just, it's never going to be the same. So that's something that you can't really get, you know, anywhere else. Um, I mean, uh, in, in that type of storytelling, when I say anywhere else, of course, concerts have their own type of storytelling, dance and whichever, but that live element, there's something. No, I just, I love plays. I, I think that's like, I think it's like it looks so like it has to be like tough because like you got to do this and you have to be like perfect because if you mess up it's just like there's no redos or nothing like <laughs> it's just like but it's not actually it's not so much perfection um uh, at least for me I don't know what you know everyone everyone has a different way of seeing it but what I started to learn that served me more was an ability to flow so someone comes on and says something completely different. You can't, you know, say the same thing that you would have said the night before. If they, they said it in a different order, if they said it in a different way, you have to react. Otherwise, you look silly you know? <laughs> <laughs> when you respond that way, even though you're going, oh, but I did the script. Um, so then flow of the moment really became important. And there was there's magic in that there like some nights all of a sudden one word hits different and you're like have you been saying that every night you know what I mean and then there's an emotional reaction um one of my favorites in LA I uh, got to be um in the show uh, so fascinating uh based off of the Martin Luther King Jr. story um very loosely based off of uh, but it was called The Good Negro and um amazing cast of just this incredible group of humans um um, and one actor Stephen he would do this thing we were characters that didn't really have you know we weren't a, a core relationship in the thing like we ran into each other periphery in certain ways but he would do things that kept it alive. Like, you know, there's one part where he was supposed to have come over to the place for dinner to meet with my husband and all of that. And he brings a gift and he brought like this little like necklace. And I remember opening it on stage and wow, because it was a surprise to me. I didn't, you know, and oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that, that was the first time that happened. And, but then there was a very genuine reaction to him and to, um, to the moment, which then, led to deeper moments, um, things that was happening between my character and her husband. It then tied into that as well. And um, speaking of that energy that comes from everybody, that that audience used to speak back to me a lot. And I loved it because they they knew things about my husband that I didn't. (laughs) And so they would be trying to warn me. Have you ever um, taken some, like, taken anything, like, anything, uh, anything that you learned from stage into, like, your personal, like, all, oh, like, from your character? Wow. You, I mean, you, you're coming with all the great questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. Kudos. Kudos. Um, yeah, I learn all the time from all of my characters, actually. Um, it, you know, no matter how far I think they are removed from who I believe I am as an individual. They always teach me something. Um, I mean, ones that stand out, there was a play um, called I Have Before Me, a remarkable document given to me by a young lady from Rwanda, long title. Um, And I had heard all the numbers of everything that had gone on in Rwanda. I, you know, the news did its job, which was report the numbers and report the facts. Um, But where storytelling does something different is sometimes your brain can't process the enormity of those kinds of numbers of individuals going through horrific things. Um, Where storytelling steps in is they take one individual or one part of the story, and by sharing that, 
then you're able to access uh, an understanding, a, a greater understanding of what occurred. So that play taught me a lot. Um, that character taught me a lot. Um, each, every, every single character that I played, they've, you know, they've given me a bit of strength, a bit of um, more empathy, um, a bit more of an understanding of myself. Amazing. Um, do you like, I'll put in my about this. I don't know how to phrase it. <laughs> my bell's was like. <laughs> Just go for it. Let's see. <laughs> uh, well, my bad. I have a train of thought. Okay. So you also, you went to college. Uh, you got your like bachelor's and uh, master's degree from yeah. Illinois State. Uh, Illinois the, State? Yeah. Uh, the master's was from Illinois State, but my undergrad was McGill University. I've, did you like take anything from like did that even like did that help you because I know it's like some people that are like actors and they went to college and they're like that didn't help me at all it was like a waste of time <laughs> did, that, <laughs> did you gain anything from that or I mean I, I think it's so important that everyone figures out what works for them um, and also everyone understands that each, each person has their own specific path you know, um, and a large part of it is figuring out what your path is. Yes, sir. So for several reasons, I had to take that path. One, um, I started college at 16 years old. So I was very young. Um, I didn't have a green card or a, um, or citizenship at that point. So I couldn't just jump into acting work. And I, at that point, had no idea how to access uh, film and TV and all the things that I wanted to do. So um, going to school was one place and I ended up going to school in Canada. Then I started, you know, with theater there, learning a whole bunch more about the acting process. Um, and then that led me to grad school. Again, I still didn't have my green card for the U US and I didn't have citizenship. Um, and coming to grad school in Illinois State, I learned so much. And a lot of it was also learning, that's not for me. <laughs> you know, the, and that's a huge, that's a huge part of it. Um, because I, I will tell you this, I, even though my GPA was high, that's like, I don't know, 3.6 or 7, um, I was one of only six people chosen for the grad program. Um, and so it's six people for two years. Nobody else comes in and that's it. And I was by far the youngest. Um, and I really wanted to get everything right. And I really wanted to be perfect. You mentioned perfect before. So I read all the things that they gave and I you know, studied all this stuff. And in that process, I kind of threw out the baby with the bathwater in that I stopped believing that I had anything really to offer in it. Like that my instincts and the things that had gotten me into storytelling were not of use. So I kind of threw all that away and my work was bland. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was not great. Uh, so much so that I ended up in academic probation uh, at the end of the first year. And I hear now what a lot of the professors are trying to say to me, they're like, where's the life? Where's the, you know? Um, and th there were certain professors that really fought for me because they they saw something that I didn't even quite was it? Oh my bad. Is, was there oh. a certain moment that made you like, like, oh, okay, I had to, it was like a bounce back moment. Like, okay, I had to, what, what was that moment like? And that happened right after being put on academic probation because I had spent so much time trying to do everything perfect. And then what for me felt like the biggest blow, like the lowest moment, like I failed, you know, they just told me I'm on academic probation. So at that point I went, I have nothing to lose. Um, and uh, the, a show came about, um, for, it was done by a grad student director, Electra. Sophocles Electra. And when I went into audition for that, I, I went, I'm going to stop trying to be perfect. I'm just going to, and I just poured my heart into it. And 
what I was surprised to learn is when people responded to that. Two, all the things that I had studied that did work for me stayed, even though I, but I wasn't, you know, working on getting it uh, academically correct. The things that worked stayed and the things that didn't fell off. But I knew about those methods now, which was great. And then I knew that they just didn't work for me. And that was my bounce back because then all the professors, you know, they called me in for a meeting. They said, you just made a huge leap. Like, this is what we're talking about. Um, obviously, I was taken off uh, academic um, probation. And that's what I think propelled everything after that because it, it created such a huge realization. Um, and so, yeah, the, that was the moment. So, like, what advice would you have for somebody? I know, like, a lot of people are like, afraid to, like, take a risk to go do this or, like, say they're afraid to go, even go audition. What advice do you have for those people? Um, if it's what you love, uh, first off, focus on what you love because there's always, there's always so much to fear, right? There's so, so much that we can be worried about. Um, if it's what you love, if it's what you want to do. And I feel like you could tell us a whole lot about that too. Um, <laughs> and, and don't think I'm not going to ask because kudos to you for everything that you're doing. Oh, thank, you. thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was that of, you know, focusing on, on the love and, you know, this is not to say that I don't still experience fear with things. This is not to say that some days aren't hard and I don't hear plenty of no's and people telling me, mm, you know, you're delusional, what you're dreaming, that, that's, that's a lot. But um, there's now come to be a level of b belief and love for what I do. And um, also for me, the, there's a huge why to what I do. I really do feel um, that my work, what I try to do with it is being part of moving the needle forward. And so for me, that's the focus. So whatever else somebody else has to say about this or that, you know, everyone's entitled to an opinion and everyone's entitled to, um, not a, I'm not a t entitled to a role or anything like that. Yeah. I know it. Um, but my focus is so much more beyond that. Um, and that has been such a huge gift. And that's always pulled me through above and beyond. So yes, I, I've been told this early on. And it's one thing I've always held on to know your why. Because um, that's what's going to take you through everything. Um, above and beyond what anyone else could have to say about what they think your trajectory is. That's amazing. Um, for me, like, uh, what do you do when you kind of like, for me, for every hundred no's I get, there's probably like one yes. So yeah. what do you like, was there like a certain like, like a no you got for audition that really like hurt you? Like, <laughs> I'm not going to say it all hurt. <laughs> but there's like, it was like a certain character you really want to play or like, oh man. Yo, I'm, I'm trying to think because you know, what's... <laughs> Well, what's absolutely incredible is that whenever that happened, that there was a role or a specific thing, I really thought I just, I absolutely wanted that. And I went through the devastating no of it, something so much better came up after. Um, and if I had been doing that, I would not have been open to the new thing. So uh, I can speak of one example that, yeah, it hurt because so many things were going on at that point. Um, this was when I was applying for my citizenship. And um, I, I don't know if many people realize how much goes into the process. A lot of people saw the movie Green Card and thought, you know, that's all that happens. You, you just, you, 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 you like have it in moments and there's no big deal, right? Yeah. Um, you know, my it. mom had to go there because he's from Trinidad. So it's like, uh -huh. <laughs> so you no, know. yeah. you know, it's a process. And so it had been years and money and all kinds of things that I did not have <laughs> been put into it. Um, and I, by the time I finally got a letter, I got one of my first, um, I was, they, there was an appointment set up and I had just booked criminal minds. 
uh, and it was a co-star one, which we know is like, co-star actually means that you have like, you know, just a couple of lines. Yeah. But that was a huge deal for me. Oh, it's Criminal Minds. It's huge, it's huge. Right? <laughs> and, and yes, you know, this is, um, you know, I'm making it. Uh, look, Ma, you know, I am I'm making it. And uh, so I booked it and they were talking about the dates for filming and uh, the dates fell on the interview day. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to call around I'm trying to figure out and, you know, you, you know, you can't reach out to them and, and reschedule the interview. And uh, casting at, that's Lisa Zambetti and all of them, I love them so much. They worked so hard to try and figure out a way um, that they could reschedule for me to come in and say these couple of lines. But um, they tried everything and they couldn't. So I missed the role. Um, and that made me sad, but what was even worse is I showed up for the interview and they told me that um, they hadn't received my paperwork from the other departments, so there was no interview that day. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I, I that, that, that hurts. <laughs> I have, but here's the beautiful part of it. So, and, and that took several times, actually. I went in like two or three times, and I was told, you know, sorry, we don't have the paperwork. And I was like, can someone just call me and let me know ahead of time? Um, but, you know, finally got that. Um, and then afterwards, uh, casting, Mrs. Zambetti and all of them, they offered me a guest star role on Criminal Minds, which, as you know, is a step. I mean, yeah, that's a better. <laughs> and bigger. <laughs> that's a, that's better. And I got to do it with um, Mike Coulter, um, also known oh. as Paige. And so I forever, I always think he's great anyways, but I forever love him from that because, um, yeah, he's a wonderful actor to work How did you um, celebrate your citizenship? I know it's like a long, difficult practice. Like, how did, how did you, like, what did you do? Like, we were like, yo, I got it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I have pictures on social somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Me with my certificate of my flag. <laughs> There's this ceremony where everyone's in the room that's get, you know getting sworn in, and they play this song like "I'm proud to be." An, uh, I'm not gonna sing it, um, but <laughs> but it's the song that usually be like, yeah, that's really cheesy. Tears, crying, crying, like just so happy, so excited. Um, everyone in that room was so happy, so excited. Um, that was the celebration there. Um, just seeing the joy, feeling the joy. It was just, yeah. So I took plenty of pictures with my flag. I was wearing a red coat that day. <laughs> there was like red, white, and blue happening all over. Um, and yeah, lots of crying. Happy to. <laughs> so I want to turn back a little bit. Um, I saw like in the one, I think it was, I think it was an interview. You were talking about that you used to watch Star Trek and Quantum Leap and everything. Would you like what like would you want to be a part of that? Like what like <sighs> would I? <laughs> like like what like what character would you like want to be like in a Star Trek? In Star Trek, I want to be a captain. I want to see, you know, yeah, I want to see because I, I love, oh my gosh, I love the work that they're doing on Discovery and, you know, Sonequa is killing it and it's, it's beautiful and I love seeing Picard. Um However, we still haven't seen like that mean lead female captain, black captain, right? Like the way that we used to see Picard in Next Generation or that we used to see Janeway in Voyager. Um, I, I want to be that. Um, and yeah, I want to be captain is that. <laughs> I'll just say that. I want to be captain. <laughs> no, that's a, no, Star Trek is like an amazing show. Do you like, do you like that or Star Wars more? I like the stars in general. So I love Star Wars. I obviously would want to be a Jedi. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole story there, I'm sure, that we have not, you know, we have not explored enough yet. But could you imagine? Uh, uh, how cool would that be? No, I know like a lot of like I remember I did like a Star Wars carpet and one of my friends was like mad at me, they're like, you betray Star Trek. I'm like, it's for my <laughs> So, so I know there's like a war. I'm like, I don't know why this is a war. Like this, I love both. 
to the war because to me, the more sci-fi, the better. So I adore Star Trek. I adore, adore Star Trek. I also adore Star Wars. Like, um, you know, no matter how many they put out, I have more than enough time to watch all of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah. yeah, this this is amazing. Like you can love both of them. It's okay to. <laughs> so when people say, "Do you like star this or star that?" I say, "I like the stars." <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start using that. I'm really gonna start using that. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you, were you. I heard you were in. Were you in a game called? Uh, you were in Call of Duty, right? Yes, I was. What? <laughs> I just found that. I was like, "Yo, that's crazy." Well, what did you do in that? I'm so. I was like, "What?" I actually used my name for the character as well. Uh, played the drop officer. But funny story, that's how I know Omid. We actually met there. And this was uh -huh. Omid Abtai, who, who plays Salim in American Gods. He um, and I met there, oh, I want to say this is about a year or several months before we found out about American Gods. Oh, and maybe have the most fun like we still call each other dng like i think his his character's name was gator um my official title at that point was drop officer so it would say dng um and i don't know if you've ever done the games um like filming them no i haven't I've... it's pretty much like being uh, a kid again because you have this empty room and you're you know they'll put like a box and say hey that's your computer so you're just like doing this on a box and you're typing on a box and it's your computer and like there's just random different things that you're pretending are different parts of a ship um, that you don't see until you watch the game and you go oh wow that's pretty cool um, but so we had different consoles on the table um, Omid and I and then we would pretend we were DJing in between and we pretend we're sending each other emails over <laughs> the stuff so yeah we became the uh, DJ group D&G and it's DNG forever. Is there like another game you want to be a part of? Oh, let's see. What other game to be a part of? There's so many good ones right now. Like me, like growing up, Halo was everything. Like, oh, well, you know, Pablo is on there. So you know, <laughs> like, I should text Pablo right now. Like, please, can I, can I come hang out? <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, yeah. Um, yeah it's, Halo is like everything. Halo, Halo and Grand Theft Auto. Right. Um, so, yeah, look out for Pablo Schreiber killing it in Halo. <laughs> um, talk, I want to get into American Guys because, like, yo, like, this season's like crazy. Even the last episode where um, you were on um, tech, Technical Boys Content, I was like, yo, this is like such a brilliant, like, how do you feel like this season, like, dude, compared to the other one? It's like, I don't know. I feel like this season's like, yo. <laughs> There's so many incredible journeys that occur in this season. There's so many incredible moments. And that's why, you know, I, I love when people watch and like get these beautiful messages where people are like, wait, what just happened? Or just sending me like mind blown emojis. Um, I, I love that we get to see, you know, hear a, a lot more from and see Celine go through so incredible, so many incredible things. I love that we're seeing Shadow Moon with much more agency and, you know, he's, he's, he's standing up for himself. You yeah. Know? Um, I, I love all of these journeys that we're seeing. We're seeing, I love Cordelia played by the lovely, lovely Ashley Reyes, who's so wonderful. And my heart goes out to her because this is her first big, like this is her first series regular, right? This is a oh. big deal. Um, but she doesn't get to have the, the red carpet. And, oh, know, yes. Yeah, that's sad. <laughs> amazing things. So my heart goes out to her, and I'm hoping that, you know, sometime soon she gets to experience all these things um, because, yeah, this is her, her first big role. Um, of course, Bruce Langley, always, always doing the great stuff. Um, uh, you know my love for Emily Browning um, and she's just killing it as per usual and of course Ian McShane who I always want to call Sir Ian McShane <laughs> <laughs> I know he's not knighted but, but I just want to call him Sir Ian McShane because I mean you could listen to that man read a phone book he's just brilliant um so and and and, and these Orishas that we're seeing um 
Karen Glaze and Horizon um, Guardiola and also um, Bridget Ogundipe. It's just, there's so, and Wale, it's, it's just so much. I can't, <laughs> I can't even. No, it just seems like this season's just like, just crazy. Um, how do you prepare for like to be a goddess? Like, <laughs> is there like is there like a certain music? Do you have like a, a playlist or is there like how do you get into that mode? Oh, okay, thanks for asking. And oh, I realize I'm wearing I'm wearing my uh, Beyonce yellow <laughs> <laughs> because yes, there are there there are so many goddesses, uh, present day goddesses that I pull from. Uh, first was it first season? It was like Beyonce soundtrack. Oh, that, that, that's all was playing. I'm like, just, it was just straight up Beyonce. Second season, Janelle Monae. Um, that was what was playing. And this third season um, was, um, oh, why am I, why am I all of a sudden Lizzo? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Lizzo, Lizzo has it. Yeah. Right? <laughs> These songs and I'm going, yeah, this, is, this sounds like the perfect soundtrack. But even before that, you know, I was pulling images and songs and things from people like Tina Turner. Someone was asking about just the, what I, um, the character of the technical boy or technical boy Bilquis, <laughs> whatever we call that, the subconscious. Um, I saw someone asking about whether Grace Jones was an influence and she absolutely was. Um, the hair was actually a hairstyle that technical boy had had before. But when I was in the makeup chair, um, Colin Penman, Emmy award winning Colin Penman makeup uh, uh, just genius he was asking me where do you want to go with this what do you want what do you, what do you want to do with this look and we we decided we were going to use uh, Grace Jones as a as a template and so it's fascinating to see that people recognize because it was just hinted at it wasn't you know done but it also affected the way that I moved in the way I, and there was there's something from her energy, like seeing her in interviews and things like that, that I felt um, uh, and helped to inspire uh, more of that work. So yes, uh, the, the short answer is yes, there's a lot of um, different. Uh, was that your favorite scene to film? I was like, yo, that was like, I don't know, like that and uh, when you're with the ancestors, I was like, yo, those are like two of my like favorite scenes in the season. Uh, I mean, so much fun uh, getting to dance with the ancestors and then coming out. And then, you know, I, I loved because you don't always see all the different scripts. So I'm seeing it for that you know, people are going to come rescue me. And I'm going, oh, okay, well, that's one way to take this story. And then come to scene five. And when Bilka steps out of the water and she says, have you come to rescue me, Shadow Moon, after having rescued herself? Had so much fun with that. Um, <laughs> but yes, getting to play the subconscious because it was something so different. And I don't think people even knew that that existed within my wheelhouse uh, performance wise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. I was like, what? I was like, hold on. <laughs> I go like, oh, we got to rewind this. So you <laughs> okay. <laughs> So it was so much fun because it was something completely different. I mean, there was nothing like it. Had, had yeah, it just came out of nowhere. I was like, what? What is going on? I said, hold on, let me rewind this. <laughs> And I, I was saying for Bruce, it must have been so surreal. Well, he said it is. It was very surreal, like looking at me being him. It was just such a random experience. Um, you know, it, it was it was a lot of fun. I had so much fun playing with that. And Timothy, the director, is just wonderful. Holly, you know, the writers on it. David Paul Francis. I think that was the first one he was officially producer on. Um, it was just a, a great group of people making something really fun happen. If you could be another uh, different character from the show, which one would you be? <laughs> now I get to choose. To choose. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should just do all of them. And <laughs> everybody's subconscious. <laughs> um, wow, that's a, that's a good question because that was a lot of fun playing. Um, in, in technical boys' minds, so that was a lot of fun to. Play. Well, be, I think it would be dope. You were like Odin's, like. I, can imagine. <laughs> I think he needs one, lads. <laughs> I think he needs one. Show up a Mr. Wednesday's subconscious. Okay, I'm gonna put that on the list. 
<laughs> so you have a um you have a short film coming out. It's um premiering at the Benton Benton Film Festival. Am I saying that right? Benton, Benton Film Festival. Festival. My bad. <laughs> So, like, how did that come about? I know you're like a writer. You're a writer on it, and you're starring in it as well. Yeah, wrote in, uh, wrote, acted in it, and produced it, um, along with I, another producer was Karen David from Fear the Walking Dead, um, and she also acts in it in it as well. And then the director and also producer was Jessica Sharif. And yeah, we got to premiere at Bentonville Film Festival, which um, one of the founders is Gina Davis, and it's an incredible festival. And then we went to American Black Film Festival. That was also a wonderful experience. Um, and I need to thank, I actually need to thank Rachel Goldberg, who was a director on this season. She was the director of episode seven. And she was the one that said to me, you need to take it to the American Black Film Festival because she had been uh, previous um, and had told me all about that. And then, yeah, we've had, and then we had the Social Justice Film Festival we, and we still have several festivals coming up, Holly Shorts. We've, we've been very lucky with that. Um, we had an incredible group to work with. The crew was amazing. Well, diversity and inclusion was very important to us. Um, very much wanting to see the kind of world that we know exists out there. Um, and, and so there were beautiful moments where, you know, the director would call cut and I'm just looking out at everybody and I'm saying, look at this, this is beautiful. This is something I get to see all the time, you know, on a set. Um, our, our actors, you know, Luke Youngblood, um, Dominic Burgess, who, speaking of someone that has done some Star Trek and well, he's done all the fun geeky sci-fi stuff. Um, and Jen Richards, uh, who was on this Watch Your Earth. Uh, we just, we were very lucky. Um, Fall Out Boy, um, you know, we, we had incredible music. And so, yeah, it, it's been a wonderful experience. And I really loved it because um, I'm pr producing um, and creating are things that I'm very interested in. Um, been working on the other side of the camera as well. And so it was lovely because it was a microcosm of what the larger picture is gonna look like. Um, and I learned a lot. It seems like you're like a huge fan of like storytelling. Do you ever see yourself like writing like a, a book? Oh, or yeah. like, <laughs> do you know what it would be about if you had to write one? Oh, I mean, there's so many different um, elements. I, I, I love sci-fi and fantasy. And I've, I've been so influenced by that. I've been influenced by Octavia Butler, by, you know, Nedia Corfor, who does African futurism. And a lot of the stories that go inside my head uh, revolve around, you know, the idea of, yeah, why is, you know, why aren't we seeing more of the sci-fi that's happening in Nigeria? You know, <laughs> like a character like myself existing in Nigeria. Maybe that ties into the Lady of the Lake thing. Maybe I write the book first. Okay. Hey. <laughs> heard it here first. <laughs> no, if that happens, let us know. We'll be back for it. We gotta be back for this. <laughs> um, did you did you hear back? Did you like audition? Did you get to audition for Storm? Or I don't even know how that's going right now for Black Panther. <laughs> um, you know what? Um, I will what I will say on that is people know that I'm a huge fan of Storm and will always be a huge fan of Storm. And that will probably always be my answer up until there's another reason to give another answer. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're doing also, they're doing, would you like want to play or like, in, like do like a voiceover for like an anime series? I know like um, HBO Max has like, or not HBO Max, but um, I know Marvel is doing like the anime series now and everything. So would you be interested in doing that as well? I, I absolutely adore her. Um, there's a special place in my heart for the live action. Um, you know, the speaking of purpose and, and all of that, but you know that I love storytelling in all its forms. And so the ability to be able to do that on all, all the different platforms would be a joy. Is there like a certain person like you would really want to work with like as an actor? Ah, so many. Um, okay, so there's actors, directors, 
of Viola Davis. I absolutely want to work with her. I mean, the representation that she has brought to the screen um, this is on so many levels. I even just posted on Instagram something she shared because I just I think <laughs> it's incredible. Um, as far as directors, Ava DuVernay, um, that for obvious reasons, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know who would <laughs> As a director. Um, also, a director that I really find exciting is Amar Shante. Um, she did Belle with uh, Gugum Patha Raw. Um, and she's done, you know, some really beautiful work. And I'm, I'm, you know, and as I'm saying these things, I very much have in mind uh, things I want to work with them on. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of I mean Denzel Washington obviously. There's also Meryl Streep. Oh and- yeah, Street. Oh yeah, <laughs> the big one, dude. <laughs> it's I just I remember the first time I saw her. I was maybe twelve, and it was the first time I watched Sophie's Choice. And keep in mind I'm an immigrant and I've come from places where I've seen people um, the way that they express English as a second language and I watched this movie and I was trying to find out from people who this actress from Poland was because that was what her character was uh, because I really believed that English was a second language for her then you know I find out (laughs) <laughs> of course, over the years of going, wait, what? She was acting because people sometimes just do the accent and that's it. But there was this whole process of, of feeling a word, translating it inside the body, and, and then, you know, trying to arrange it uh, out of the mouth in, in real time in, in the way that um, the, that person has learned. And it was so authentic. It was so, for me as an immigrant, I really thought, you know, that that was her experience. Um, and so that's, that's lived with me for a, a while. Is there a movie that like, you can go back in time and like be in that, you know what I'm saying? Like, go back and do it. Like, just, like, just go back in time, like, or just like, like, oh, I could just be in that movie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I want to insert myself in a couple. That <laughs> is one. Um, but then also, oh man, I really, when I watched Roots, that was something I really wanted to be a part of. And I'm going, well, I'm, and, and I missed it twice. <laughs> Not <just the> <laughs> um, uh, oh boy, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm like, I know Denzel, definitely. There were quite a few times I watched the movie and I was like, I wish I, wish I was in that. And there was a couple, a couple, even Will Smith, I like, um, <laughs> there's, he had some good ones too that I really wanted to be in. I just actually want to be in Fresh Prince, honestly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fresh Prince. I wanted to be in Fresh Prince. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, there's Gosh, there's quite a few. Um, Beloved um, with Oprah and um, um, Tandy Newton. I, I thought that was brilliant. Um, speaking of Oprah, Color Purple. Color Purple. Uh, that's that's still hard to watch. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's hard to watch, but did you did you ever used to watch 30 Rock? No, I haven't. Okay. Well, that was, that was Tracy Jordan, like the character, right? Where he wanted to win all the awards. He wanted to win an Emmy, Golden Globe, an Oscar, and a Tony. And so his plan was to make a movie. Um, and he called it hard to watch because all the movies that, you know, win the Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it seems like it, it does really seem like all the movies that win it. Which is kind of, I don't, I, I, it's like, kind of sad because like, yo, I see some really good movies that like, yo, this should be Oscar worthy and they're like, they don't get nominated, but yeah, But it's not hard to watch. So. It, is, it is hard to watch. Like, if you really want to make, it seems like if you really want to be in the Emmys or Oscar or the Golden Globe, you got to make something like, yo, like, I can't even watch that one time. <laughs> but for me, like, um, Ava's, uh, oh, what is it? She just dropped it. That was harder for me to watch. Um. Hmm. 
Oh, I mean, she has so much good work. Oh, she just dropped it. It's, it was on Netflix. I'm, I'm really. Oh, my... oh wait, that wasn't enough. When an they option. see us, when they see us. Yes, yeah. That was hard for me to. I was like, yo, that's it. <laughs> it took me a while, and people told me you're gonna have to prepare yourself. No, you really do. Nobody told me that. I just watched it. I was like, yo, what am I watching? I was like, <laughs> the story time was incredible. What the real world implications, like the effects that it caused in real life, making people accountable, that was really worth it. Um, but yeah, I hear you. It, it was not easy. Um, many of those movies that I, I, I think- I feel like it still goes, it still goes on to today. Like, it's like, yo, yeah. like, those are like, I was like, yo, I really like wanted to go in the movie and like beat up some police officers. <laughs> I was like, what are y'all doing to these young men? <laughs> It really, it, she did such a great job, um, just cinematically as well, and um, showing the cracks in a foundation that we're working to to shift. Um, and I think it did. You know, we speak about moving the needle forward. I think it did just for the whole society um, because every people became more aware. And again, that's storytelling. Storytelling making people feel more empathetic and um, understand that there that the, there was so much there was so much going on. I mean, there were people that heard about it in the news and heard about different things, but really, really walking a mile in someone's shoes and and really experiencing the empathy. I, I think um, that was just such a gift. Do you see yourself like doing like a writing or even like directing like one of those like just because I know you're like involved like you like with humanity like that probably inspires you like do you could you see yourself doing one of those? Uh, doing sorry. Doing, like a, um like one of those hard to watch films. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, I I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know we talk about it and we laugh about it, but absolutely. I mean, part of the reason it's hard to watch is that sometimes. You know, the art needs to be a mirror up to us. It needs to point out the areas that sometimes we don't want to look at. That's why it's hard to watch, right? Um, but those things, until we face them, we can't really change them. And so, you know, yes, I would want to be a part of making sure that we're facing things, but I also want to make sure that, that we're experiencing some joy um, especially for people of color, <laughs> that that we then get to see um, people being able to have lighthearted moments, to just have a slice of life, you know, have a romance, have a without 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 being rooted in trauma. Um, so I think we need we need to see those different areas, and we need to add more of the lighthearted and slice of life moments and just seeing, you know, people of color being able to live their everyday lives, um, our everyday lives. <laughs> is there like, have you ever like, is there a book you read that was like joyful that you would like love to like put out into the world since we're talking about? Uh, joyful books. Um, yes. Uh, I, oh, which ones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan of a lot of different different books. So I'm trying to choose. I mean, there's there's been lots of fun stuff from Nettie Okorafu, like I mentioned. Um, she has her Akata, Akata Witch, Akata Warrior. She also has a Kabu Kabu. Um, there's some really lovely light stories in that. And then there are also stories in that because Kabu Kabu is a, a collection of short stories. So there's some dark stuff and then there's some light stuff. So it's a nice balance um between the two uh but something that just brought well I also obviously a Neil Gaiman fan so like Ocean and at the end of the lane I really enjoyed but it def definitely has its uh peaks and valleys um huh I'm trying to think of one that's just pure joy <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last I read that's just your joy and um oh wow the, the, the no there were definitely trials and tribulations within them but but uh on the other side there there was triumph and joy 
Is there like a certain movie that you watch that was just like, do you have your favorite like joyful movie that like, oh, this is like the movie I would like go to if I'm ever feeling sad or anything? Yeah, I mean, um, it's pretty much most (laughs) (laughs) sci-fi. Most sci-fi and fantasy. I mean, name one. And I probably said that's like Willow. You know, it's it's the perfect fantasy film, uh, fairy tale. Every everyone's happy at the end of it. It works out, you know, um, a good triumphs over evil, um, like those kinds of stories. I, I do the same with a lot of the different Star Wars variations. Um, going back to Star Wars and Star Trek, um, uh, just purely joyful. Um, I also really liked A Wrinkle in Time. I thought that was so lovely. Um, and I thought such great work was done there and it made my heart happy. Um, uh, see, it's funny whenever people ask me this question in the moment, I go, I can't remember anything. And then as soon as we stop talking, <laughs> I have like a list <laughs> of 20 movies that I like to watch. Um, even for the, I only recently watched Die Hard for the first time, and I went, "Oh my gosh, that is so much fun!" <laughs> you know, um, is there like a, um, is there like when you're like tired or exhausted, and you like, is there like a certain show or movie you go to that like makes you like motivated? Like for me, like if I'm like like feeling tired and I still got work to do, I, I'll go watch like an anime scene or something, like from like Dragon Ball Z or like Naruto. Is there like a certain thing for you for that? Star Trek Next Generation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a geek. I am such a geek. But I love that whole family there. I love, you know, um, Captain Picard, Jordy LaForge, Worf. Like, and usually in every episode, and Data, Data. I loved Data and Deanna, all of them. And what I loved is that in every episode, um, this was why I loved Star Trek so much. It was because there was this idea that we're always trying to be better and we're always trying to do the best thing. And sometimes they get it wrong, but if they find out they do it wrong, they work towards bettering that. And, and, and that was the optimism I felt through Next Generation. And, and so that's why that was always my original favorite. Um, and, and it's also something I can put on in the background because I've watched every episode at least two, three times. So if not four or five, <laughs> I'm trying to hide my geekiness now. Um, so it feels warm, it feels comfortable and it feels inspired and motivational. And, and so, yeah, that's my, that's my goal. You ever like hear it from your friends? Cause my friends are like, like Wayne, why are you still watching anime? Uh, I'm like, yo, this is inspiring. I don't know why. Do you ever get that from your friends? <laughs> um, and I do this also when I'm watching, when I know I'm going to watch a hard to watch. I, I immediately pair it with, okay, after I watch this, I'm going to watch some Steven Universe or I'm going to watch, you know, something that's just bright and light and like a cartoon. It's something that's fun um, so that I can lift back up out of that, you know, emotional space. So um, I say you do you more power. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot to ask you this. Um, for American gods, would you like to see, is there any like certain gods or goddesses that you would like to see added to the show? Um, I mean, the addition of the Orishas was such a, a great addition, um, and one that I had beforehand not expected. It wasn't until um, Nick Gilly, um, who writes on, on this season, I went to see his one man play with, um, with Ricky. And he told me after the play, I loved, loved the work he did in that. And he told me after the play about the Orishas and my mind just um my mind blew i was so excited um i i would like to see you know more from the continent maybe it's just because i'm so you know (laughs) a little biased um so yeah more more of the gods from also more of the egyptian gods as well and um is there like a certain one you wanted a certain one um See, you, you know me, I like a lot of different things. So I'm like, why choose one when we can have all of these? <laughs> um, uh, a certain one. I, you know, I, I, I think I, of 
full range, like the more the merrier. Uh, makes me excited. I, I also love seeing from many different parts of the world. I think that's exciting. Um, so I, I would like to see God where is the bird? 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 Where is